Hey everyone, my name is Chris Anderson and I'm in Mammoth Cave National Park. This is the longest cave system on Earth. Scientists have explored less than half of what they estimate to be over a thousand miles of caves. But how does a cave this big form? Or a cave of any size for that matter? What are the forces that go behind making these subterranean worlds? Let's find out today on Outsider Classroom. <laughs> Now, if you are a fan of the show, you might remember our video from Arches National Park where we learned how weathering, erosion, and deposition work together to create thousands of stone arches. Weathering is the breaking down of rock into smaller pieces known as sediment. Erosion is the transportation of said sediment by wind or water. And deposition is the laying down of those sediments in a new location. We even learned a really cool dance from Dr. Lydia Jennings to help us remember those terms. Hey guys, can we get a replay of that uh, dance video? Three. One, two, two three. three. Detach, transport, and deposit. See, wasn't that cool? My recommendation is that you do that dance for your friends and family in very public spaces. They'll be delighted to learn something new and appreciate your willingness to share that knowledge with them in front of complete strangers. Mammoth Cave is located in what is called a karst landscape. Areas that tend to have a lot of sinkholes and springs, and you guessed it, caves. Most of the time, the bedrock in a karst landscape is limestone, a sedimentary rock that's formed by coral reefs. The limestone bedrock in southern Kentucky was laid down between 320 and 360 million years ago, when this whole area was much closer to the equator and underneath a warm, shallow sea. And it's this bedrock that makes this whole cave system possible. Limestone is really susceptible to chemical weathering when rock breaks down due to a chemical reaction. And just like your dad dancing at a wedding, there's two simple steps. First, it rains. When raindrops fall from the sky, they dissolve a little carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, creating carbonic acid. This is a pretty weak acid as far as acids go, but it's enough to lower the pH to around 5.6 roughly the same acidity as your saliva. Now, limestone is made of an alkali salt called calcium carbonate, one of the main ingredients in baking soda. And if you've ever mixed baking soda with vinegar, you know that when calcium carbonate comes into contact with an acid, you get a chemical reaction. Well, that's exactly what happens here. When rain hits the surface and eventually comes into contact with the bedrock via streams and rivers and creeks, it reacts, breaking down the rock, and voila, chemical weathering. Now, how do we go from a kind of weak acid to the world's longest cave system? I don't know, but you know who does? My friend and hydrologist, Bruce Hatcher. So Bruce, we know that water uh, reacts with limestone and breaking it down through a process of chemical weathering. How has water shaped Mammoth Cave? Well, Mammoth Cave, Anytime you're in it, you are standing in an abandoned underground river. So this is a this used to be a river. This used to be a river. Huh. That's what forms Mammoth Cave. So as that water flows through here, it's starting to dissolve. So it would have started way up there at the ceiling. And then over time, it would cut its way further and further down. Water is always trying to reach you know, the lowest point. You know, these passages are big. There's, you know, hundreds of miles in Mammoth Cave. Why is it so big in this cave? What, what, what goes behind making this cave so huge? Well, Mammoth Cave has a roof, more or less. Okay. We have a layer of sandstone and shale up there uh, that sits above us, and that keeps water from dripping straight in. Uh, water comes through, it dissolves out as these underground rivers flow, but it also dissolves even drip by drip as it comes down into the cave. Uh, so as it drips its way through the ceiling, 
it's dissolving that rock away. Once it gets out here into the atmosphere, it lets the carbon dioxide go back. And that carbon dioxide, as it leaves, it has to get rid of the calcium. And that's what starts to make these formations that you see. So what's going on there is you're dissolving some of your roof, you're adding formations on the inside. Highly decorated caves don't usually end up as long as Mammoth Cave uh, because their upper layers collapse in and fill in and, and eventually disappear. So what's the difference between how limestone and sandstone react with water? Uh, they react completely different. Uh, limestone is very easily chemically weathered. It's going to dissolve uh, in an acid uh, because of all that calcium it has in there. Sandstone is pretty non-reactive. It's just a different mineral. It's mainly made up of quartz pebbles. Uh, so that quartz doesn't react and it doesn't uh, chemically weather. So how can I tell if I'm looking at sandstone or if I'm looking at limestone? Geologists have a really easy test that we use. <clears throat> right behind me, we have a couple different rocks. Okay. Got a piece of sandstone, got a piece of limestone. Okay. And the most important part here. Yeah, I'll hold one. There you go. Is some dilute hydrochloric acid. Okay. Now, the limestone is made up of calcium carbonate. And when you take a little drip of this hydrochloric acid, put it on a piece of limestone, it... Oh, wow, look at it go. Really fizzes. Yeah, that's super bubbly. So what's ha well, like, what, what is happening with, the, like, why are the bubbles forming? Yeah, so the acid is breaking down the, uh, the calcite, and as it breaking, is breaking it apart, you get calcium carbonate. It's dissolving out calcium. It's taking that into the acid. It's off-gassing some CO2, uh, some carbon dioxide, and that's what makes the bubbles. So this is uh, kind of similar to what happens when water kind of carves through the limestone. Exactly just on a more concentrated scale. Now the roof of sandstone that we have above us here, if you look at this sandstone, put the drips. Well, that was a little underwhelming. Yeah, it's a lot less exciting. So nothing happens. The, well, uh, how come that doesn't react? Well, it's just a different mineral. Silica dioxide, quartz is mostly what the sandstone is made up of, and it does not dissolve when it comes into contact with an acid. Well. Bruce, thanks for teaching me the difference between sandstone and limestone and how that works to form these awesome caves. You're very welcome. Mammoth Cave National Park is a great place to visit. You can hike, bike, camp, go fishing, and check out the amazing ranger programs. But a visit to Mammoth Cave isn't complete without doing one of the guided cave tours. It doesn't matter if it's your first or 51st visit. Cave this big, there's always something to explore. Cave tours that are offered change seasonally and can book up to a month in advance, so plan ahead. Check out recreation.gov to see what's being offered when you are visiting and to book your ticket. Now, I've been lucky enough to go on a couple different tours in my life, so here's some pro tips. First, it doesn't matter if it's snowing or sweltering at the surface. Inside the cave, it's always 55 degrees. Dress like you'll feel inside, not how you feel outside. Two have a good, sturdy pair of shoes. Three, make sure you use the bathroom before you go in the cave because you might not have access to the lone restrooms once you're inside. Four, don't leave anything in the cave. Trash or humans or heck, even trash humans. And finally, know your limits. Some cave tours you won't exert yourself more than just to stroll down the street. Others are more intense. So while the six hour, five and a half miles squeeze through tiny cracks, wild cave tour might sound fun. If you're not used to doing something that physical, that might not be the tour for you. You can always try something a little easier and then come back and do something more challenging. Well, that's our show. Thanks for watching. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some erosional templates to calibrate. See you next time in Outsider Classroom. Want to learn more about our national parks? Then hit that subscribe button, friend. Stay up to date and catch bonus features by following us on Instagram, at Outsider.